The following video features Normand Camo from Middle Earth Creations. Normand is one of Canada's most innovative rustic furniture designers. His natural wood creations are functional, durable works of art. Normand shares his knowledge of rustic furniture making at workshops, which he conducts on a regular basis. Learn how branches that are usually discarded can be turned into something beautiful. Normand transforms gardens with gazebos, uniquely sculpted creations, and trellises for pathways or entrances. Relax and enjoy the personal space of your own nest chair or bench surrounded by flowering vines. You can bring nature into your home with Normand Camo from Middle Earth Creations. This is Normand Camo from Middle Earth Creations. Today, with Normand's help, we will be showing you how to make a comfortable fan back chair. We will be using natural wood, branches, and saplings, small trees, commonly found by the road or in wetland areas. Sometimes branches trimmed from trees in the city can make excellent building materials. Young cedar trees and lilac are very common and make excellent chair frames because they are very durable and if left outdoors are resistant to weathering. However, for indoor or porch use, almost any kind of wood can be used as long as it is sturdy and preferably dry. If you use damp wood, it will shrink as it dries and you may have to rehammer your nails. Once all the wood is dried, your chair will remain sturdy for many years. How do you select and prepare wood for your chair frame? Often you can find stands of cedar that are dead trees and are already dry. But for live trees, it is normal practice to cut your wood in the winter or early spring before the thaw. This minimizes moisture in the wood because most of the sap is still below ground in the roots. You should store your wood outdoors in a dry, well-ventilated location near the place where you plan to build your furniture. It can take wood two to six months to dry depending on how wet it is. If storage space is a problem, and tying it into bundles facilitates compact storage and easier transportation. You will only need six pieces of long straight willow, so the rest of your wood can be cut to 40 inches in length for easy portability. Cedar is normally available in two to four inch diameters. Lilac, willow, and tree branch prunings tend to be smaller in diameter. Cedar tends to be very straight, but other woods tend to have more varied shapes which get incorporated into the furniture's design. Before we begin to build the chair, let's go over the tools that you should have. A tape measure, a small axe or hatchet, large and small pruning shears, a pruning saw, a standard hacksaw, a circular saw if you have one, a good quality cordless electric drill with some 1 8 inch drill bits, a standard claw hammer, a small well-balanced hammer if you have one, a nail pouch, 4 inch, 3 inch, 2 inch, and 1 and a quarter inch galvanized Ardox nails, a chisel with a 1 inch blade, an auto body rasp, a bucket tool organizer, and a work table or flat surface with a straight edge for reference. To begin our fan back chair, we start with an A-frame design for the back. First, we select the two pieces of wood that will become the rear legs. A slightly curved wood should be used to ensure that the back of the chair will be parallel to the front edge of the finished chair. If straight pieces of wood such as cedar are used, a notch made with an axe might be required to keep the back of the chair parallel to the front edge. Let's use the curved rear legs. Lay them down on the work surface, overlapping at the top with the bottoms 30 inches apart and flush with the edge of the work surface. Twist them so that six inches below where they cross, the legs are equal distance from the work surface. With a 1 8 inch drill bit, pre-drill one hole from the top piece one quarter inch into the next. Hammer in a nail of appropriate length until it penetrates the second piece of wood by a quarter of an inch. They should be trimmed to 32 inches in length. Using the short-handled axe, remove one inch of bark, beveling the ends. Reposition the wood using the nail as a marker. 
Hammer it in enough to hold, checking again that six inches below where they cross, the wood is equal distance from the work surface, within a tolerance of half an inch. Drill two more holes at different angles to the first nail. Driving in the nails at different angles keeps them from loosening over time. This is important to remember for all chair frame components. As a general rule, when making rustic furniture, the length of your nails should be 80 to 100 percent of the combined thickness of the two pieces of wood being nailed. Raise the assembly up vertically. Then check that the top of the A-frame is centered relative to the bottom of the legs. If it is not centered, shorten one leg. Now, with the bottom of the chair leg still flush with the edge of the work surface, measure 13 inches from the bottom and mark the legs with a couple of nails. Line up a slightly curved 2 to 3 inch diameter piece of wood 30 inches long below the two marker nails. Twist it so that the corners curve upwards. The curve must be lowest at the center and ready to support the rear of the seat evenly. Pre-drill two holes into this rear seat support. With a small piece of wood underneath the A-frame for support, lightly tack the rear support onto the legs with two nails. Raise the assembly up at a 20 degree angle from vertical to check that measurements taken at both sides of the seat are equal. Make an adjustment if required, then drive in the two nails. Pre-drill and add four more nails for added strength. This completes the chair's A-frame back. Now let's assemble the front of the chair, which we call the H-frame. It consists of two 28-inch long front legs, which are the same diameter as the rear legs, and a 30-inch straight cross piece for the front of the seat. The front legs are important visually, and you might want to select wood which has some character, preferably with similar curves. After beveling the ends, place the two legs so that the thick ends are flush with the edge of the work surface. Angle the tops out approximately 20 degrees. Using wedges of scrap wood, prop the legs into the desired position. Measure up 15 inches from the edge of the work surface and place a couple of small nails as markers. These should be pointing straight up as a future reminder of the exact twist position you have chosen. Keeping the same angle on the two legs, position them so that the marker nails are 25 inches apart. Remember, the nails must still point straight up now place a straight or very slightly curved 30 inch cross piece below the marker nails. Twist it to find the most uniform top edge. Pre-drill a hole on either side through the top pieces and one quarter inch into the bottom pieces. Hammer in nails of appropriate length until it penetrates the second piece of wood by a quarter of an inch. Now the three pieces of wood are joined. Hold the H assembly vertically, and without twisting the wood, adjust the legs in or out, or until they look even. The cross members should be equal height from the bottom on both sides. Put the assembly back onto the work surface and drill two more holes on each side. Then, drive in all six nails. Remember, check that your nails are the appropriate length. Next, we're going to join the A-frame and the H-frame. Select two straight pieces of wood for the outside seat parts that are slightly smaller in diameter than the front legs and 26 inches in length. With a small axe, remove the bark from the ends. Hold the A-frame upright on the work surface. Prop it up against your bucket facing sideways at a 20 degree reclining angle. In front, hold the H-frame and place the two selected straight pieces of wood across the front and back. They should be positioned inside the front legs and outside the back legs. Holding the H-frame close to vertical, make sure that the back and front look centered. The two outside seat parts should extend two inches in front of the H-frame. Pre-drill one hole straight down through one of the outside seat parts above the H-frame cross piece. Drive a nail through the outside seat part and far enough into the H-frame cross piece to hold it together. Measure 21 inches from the front edge of the H-frame to the rear leg above the seat member. Check that the H-frame is visually centered in front of the A-frame. 
holding the outside seat part firmly against the A-frame. Pre-drill through the outside seat part straight down into the A-frame seat member and drive in a nail. Repeat this process on the other side and make final adjustments for the H and A frames. Then pre-drill a hole sideways through the outside seat parts into each leg. It's important that the outside seat parts make good contact with both the legs and cross members. Now, when we remove the bucket, the chair should be rigid enough to maintain its 20 degree reclining angle. Next, we will add the two rear cross braces, which extend behind the rear legs and make contact with the floor. For the first rear cross brace, select a slightly curved 40 inch piece of wood, which is the same thickness as the front legs. Use the small axe to bevel the largest end. Insert this piece of wood through the rear lower opening of the A-frame with the thickest end at the bottom. Have the top end touch the outside seat part and outside front leg opposite the bottom end of the rear cross brace. Twist the cross brace in an upward or downward arc so that it leaves a space for the other three cross members to pass through the middle of the chair. The rear cross braces should extend back as far as the top peak of the A-frame. These braces keep the chair from tipping over backwards, as well as adding structural support. Any excess length of the rear cross brace will protrude out the front and can be trimmed later. Ensuring that the bottom end is touching the ground and the inside of the rear leg, pre-drill and tack in a nail at the top of the cross brace sideways into the front leg. Check again that the H-frame is still centered with the A-frame. Pre-drill a hole from the cross brace sideways straight into the rear leg and partially tack in a nail. With your chair sitting on a flat surface, check that when nailing in the rear cross braces, all four feet and the cross brace are still touching the ground. Next, for the second rear cross brace, select a slightly more curved 40 inch piece of wood, again the same thickness as the front legs. Insert the second rear cross brace through the back lower opening of the A-frame also with the thickest end at the rear. Twist this cross brace as required to find the best fit, remembering the importance of contact with the ground. Drill and tack nails into place, being careful to ensure that both rear braces and all four legs remain on the ground. Drive in the four nails, then pre-drill and hammer in an additional two nails for each contact point. Next, we will add two more diagonal supports, then work on the seat of the chair. Up until now, we have only recommended the use of dried pieces of wood. But now we will need to gather and use more flexible, freshly cut wood, which we will refer to as wet wood. Generally, soft woods under an inch and a half thick can be easily bent. For extreme curves, swamp willow is best. Hardwoods are less flexible, so you must take branches that are already naturally bent and find ways to fit them into your creations. Locate an easy to bend 40 inch long piece of wood with a large curve in it. You might have to try four or five different pieces of wood before you find the right one. Insert the thinnest end upwards under the left side seat member. Have it protrude below the opposing outside seat part touching the top rear of the seat. The bottom of the cross brace should make contact with the inside of the opposite front leg. Next, we need to find out if the best piece of wood has been selected. Twist it and look to see that it protrudes three inches from the side of the chair leg while making ground contact. This brace should also touch one of the internal cross members. Because it is wet wood, it allows you to bend it slightly if needed. If a slight adjustment is required, tack in a marker nail to indicate the inside of the curve. Remove the new brace from the chair and place the thick end on the floor. While holding the thin end in front of you with your hand, bend it with one of your feet. Your marker nail reminds you what direction to apply your bending force. Be careful only to apply slow and steady pressure with your foot and avoid faults in the wood. Bend more than is required because the wood will spring back somewhat. Reinsert your wood using the marker to find your previous position. Make sure that the new brace is still in contact with the floor. 
Then pre-drill and tack nail a brace into the inside of the front leg. When you are sure that all the chair legs are still making contact with the work surface, pre-drill the rest of the holes at all contact points on the new cross brace. As a general rule, when you drive in nails, you should support the piece you are nailing into with your second hammer. For the right front cross brace, repeat the entire process again. However, for this one, you will most likely need a piece of wood that has an extreme bend near the thicker end. Now, with the right front cross brace mounted, we need to prepare for work on the chair seat. Try to use swamp willow branches that are slightly thinner than the outside seat parts. Use up your short pieces of swamp willow first and avoid cutting into your longer straight pieces. You will need the longest ones later to form the curve of the fan back. Cut two pieces thinner than the outside seat parts approximately 26 inches in length. Place them on the front and back cross members touching the inside of the A-frame at the rear of the chair. Align them so that they are parallel to the outside seat parts and leave enough room on the outside for one more piece. Pre-drill and tack in the first two seat parts. Both ends of the other seat parts should extend one and a half inches beyond the front and back cross members unless they end at the A-frame. Add eight or nine more seat parts, bearing in mind that we want them to get progressively thinner towards the middle of the seat. Arrange them with the thicker ends towards the front Twist or bend them to produce a uniform surface to sit on, and use a straight edge or piece of milled lumber to check for uniformity. Also check for even spacing between rungs. Working from the outside in, pre-drill and tack in nails front and back. If everything looks good, drive your nails in. Trim the ends using your small pruning shears, and your chair seat is done. Next, we will work on the back, arms, and artistic touches for our chair we will need to find a back support piece to which we will attach the fanning seat parts and the armrests. Locate a 28 inch long, two inch thick, straight or slightly curved piece of wood. Stand behind the chair and place the back support against the A-frame four to six inches above the rear of the seat. Twist it to find a position that makes it parallel with the front edge of the seat. If you are unable to make it parallel, Make a notch up to half an inch deep in one of the A-frame legs. If a half inch notch won't be enough to make it parallel, a short spacer can be nailed on instead of cutting a notch. From behind the chair, hold the back support in the horizontal position, pre-drill it, and nail one side into place. With a tape measure, check that the top of the back support piece is the same height from the ground on both sides of the seat, then nail in the other side. At this point, we begin adding what I like to call whips, long, straight, and very flexible pieces of willow. They should be about one inch in thickness. These will be used for the fan back. The relationship of the back support piece to the front edge of the fan back arch will set the reclining angle. Pre-bend one of your longest willow branches, bending the thick end the most. Using the curve in the wood as a guide, pre-drill the thick end and tack it firmly to the front of the A-frame leg. Leave the nail head protruding slightly, just in case you have to alter its position. Bend the willow whip to form an arch approximately three feet above the bottom of the chair. Hold the thin end of the hoop near the opposite rear leg. Check that the arch looks round and trim the small end to within half an inch of the bottom of the rear leg. Tack in a nail through the thin end of the willow piece into the rear leg. Be careful that the wood does not snap back and hit you. Trim the back support ends to fit inside the arch. Standing behind the chair, look down over the arch to see if it is parallel to the back support. With a couple of straight sticks positioned temporarily on the chair's back, check that the reclining angle is the one desired by sitting on the chair and trying it out. 
pre-drill the arch piece and tack it into the ends of the back support. Select another pre-bent willow piece and tack it into the back of one of the rear legs. Have this piece overlap on top of the first arch and trim its length if required. Then stand in front of the chair and check that the arches look symmetrical. Now it's time to nail the two arches together. Because the arches are wet wood, we can drive in one and a quarter inch nails without pre-drilling. Get your nails started eight inches apart. Remember that the front edge of the arch created should be parallel with the back support. Next, Select eight half inch to three quarter inch straight or slightly bent willow pieces that are 26 inches in length. Divide them into pairs of equal thickness. Position the thickest pair on the rear back support at the outside of the seat. Tack them in at the bottom only. Find another pair one size thinner. Hold them on the inside of the previous pair leaving a space equal to the thickness of the wood tack them in at the bottom. Using your straight edge horizontally, check that a 1 8 inch gap exists between the edge and the new back parts. Position the last pair, which should ideally be half an inch thick. Align them with uniform spacing. Fan out the top ends to create the desired look. Pre-drill all tops with sideways angled holes. After final adjustments have been made, drive the top nails in. Finish driving in the lower nails. And use the straight edge to check that the back is even. Our basic chair frame is now complete and ready for artistic embellishment. Choosing the right pieces of wood for the arms can add a lot of character to your chair. So try a few different curved pieces to see what looks and feels best. They should be as thick as the front legs and 28 inches in length. Once a good arm piece is found, look for a similar piece for the other side. With your arms cut to size and beveled on the ends, place the thin ends of both arms on top of the rear back support. Twist them until the desired look and feel is achieved. Lower one of the arms to the chair seat while holding the second piece in position. Pre-drill and tack the first arm onto the outside edge of the front chair leg. Check to see if the tops of both arms are equal height from the ground and make adjustments if required. Position and tack in the other arm in a similar manner. Adjust the back of the arms to a comfortable width. Then pre-drill and tack the back of the arms into place. Pre-drill two more holes per contact point and drive in nails of appropriate length. Add to the arms some pre-bent wet 3 quarter inch willow. Attach them onto the outside of each arm and curve them upwards to follow the edge of the arched back.
let's add another piece of pre-bent willow to the front of the chair. These final pieces of trim not only look great, they make the chair more sturdy. To finish the chair, go over some of the ends with clippers to remove rough edges. Then use a rasp to round off corners that might come into contact with hands or arms. A chisel can be used to remove any bumps on the seat and backrest. Take another look to make sure that all nails have been driven in. Any nail tips that protrude through the wood should be cut with a hacksaw or filed off. Your chair is now complete. If you want to put a protective coating on your chair, wait a couple of weeks for the wood to dry. We recommend using a good quality outdoor varnish or a polyurethane satin finish. In either case, dilute 30% with paint thinner and apply finish with a 3 inch paintbrush outdoors or in a well ventilated area. Natural wood can be used to build all kinds of furniture such as benches, nest chairs, tables, stools, and beautiful accessories for your garden. We hope you enjoyed the show. Bye for now.